Okay, let's try something different. You're not getting any dip. It's not a distance thing, it's about not catching a roll. So make sure, and if you have to like the 706, you're gonna have to jimmy it a little. You know, you're gonna have to take off the uh, handle, maybe put a couple of washers in there until you get it to where the handle's down and the spool's out. You know? So, it's a little tip. No, while, while we're here uh, on this topic, we did get a lot of. Uh I'll do a little of that. That's a good, that's a good idea. Even for you experienced guys, I mean. So, first thing to catch. This, this is a spline. In the back, of guys, can anybody hear me here? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so, in the back of the uh, rod is a spline and a rod. And this is kind of what I tell everybody as soon as I take them out. This is a spine of the rod. It's not here and it's not here. So a rod is designed to take the load right here, right? So in other words, when you're coming back, you don't want to be here. You want to be here. This is no good. You want to be right here, right? Or if you're going to win, you can do a side arm cast, you're going to be right here, right? Because that's it's going to look at the spine. You don't want to be right here because that's not the spine of the rod, right? So when you're coming back, you're loading up. And I tell people, you know, especially people who are starting out with Kenny, you know, you see me, I load, I come here, and I load, you know, like this. You got to be careful with the fish like that. Because if, you, if, you, if you're going to load the rod, and you're one of these guys on the back cast, you're curling up like that, you can break the rod. I know a lot of guys who break, and I had one very experienced guy. No, I'm on my third freaking ladder class. What, what do you think is, I'm doing wrong? I looked at his cast. I'm like, you're coming back, and it's twirling up. And when you come back, if the plug twirls like this, it hits the rod and causes a bad load of the rod, and you're losing all your energy. So it should come back evenly and go boom if you've got a back cast like this. I recommend the best cast I know. You guys know Toad? Anybody knows Toad? Yep. Uh, freaking man, he's older now. Man, back in the day, nobody could outcast him. It was unbelievable. When Toad does, he comes here, <laughs> boom, that's how he casts. That's it. It's one motion. <laughs> so when I'm teaching guys, I say, stand here, you, want, you're, you don't want to be like this. You don't want either this foot here and this foot here. You want both feet pointing to where you're going to cast. If I want to sit to cast that exit sign, both my feet, the shoulders are squared out to where I'm going to cast. You know, especially if you're going to fish the rocks. You know, you can get away with this with fishing the beach, but if you're on the rocks, this is how I, I would want you to learn. So everything's facing that way, about a 45 degree angle, and then you come, you're going to come down with it, and immediately, as the line's going out, the rod should be in between your legs. The rod should never be here. Or you shouldn't do this. I don't know why for the guys to do this. So cast out, and the weight, and almost when it hits, the pull up. And go. To this day, I don't know why people do that. It's, it, it's, you're, you're casting out, it hits, you, you slap up right away. Another thing is finger placement. Finger placement is huge. To be honest, how many guys cast mortars a lot? They go up and they go down. A lot. So, I I can bet, maybe not, but I can bet the reason he does that is because of his finger placement. If you're taking your finger, probably can't see this, but if you're taking your finger and here's a line and you're pointing it's a rod like that when you're when you're fishing, and you're like this, and the rod and the line is here. It's in your finger, and it's butting up against the rod tight. What's happening is you're developing slack between the spool and your finger. And that little slack causes it to jump. And you just, you know, you're going to throw a lot of mortars when you do that. Instead, your finger should be not down here, not hooked. It's on your fingertip. Notice it's, oh, I can't see it, but notice it's not hooked. It's, uh, it's just laying on my fingertip, off, off the rod. 
right? Off the rocks, here. It's above the school and it's here. Stringer placement is extreme rock when you're landing a fish, right? I catch on, I got fish on, fight them, and the fight too. The fight is pull back, reel down, pull back, reel down. It's not continuously reel. Let the rod do the work, not the reel. So pull back, reel down, pull back, reel down. Now I'm say I'm on a rock. I'm in my talk. Well, I'm in a rock where there's good white water. What you don't want to do is have take off the fish and, and have it right in front of you. You want to go around on your rock like this and on the side of you. You know why that is? Because the wave will hit the fish, knock it into your waves, and now you got a freaking trap a hook or a hook in you and the fish at the same time. So you want to go around. I keep it in between my legs, right? I get it where I can grab the leader, and then I bend down, grab the leader, and I bogey it or do whatever I have to do. But notice where my hand is. It's here. I have complete control of the rock. Guys that fish on rocks, and they're going like this, you know they don't know what the hell I'm doing. You know, they're like this, and they're trying to get it, and you know, they're gonna break the rod head. You know, you want it. And yeah, there's, there's a kind of level of high sticking here too. That's why you want a badass rod when you're fishing the rocks. So you're here, I got complete control of it. The rod's locked in between my legs, locked. Not loosey goosey ever. Also, when I'm reeling, when I'm, when I'm plugging, I don't want loosey goosey here, right? You got loosey goosey here, you can't feel anything. You want a tight salad? See this? See where my hand is? My hand is not locked, it's, it's, it's on my fingertips. It's all about feel, especially at night. So if I'm here, I can't feel it. If I lock it between my legs and, and mm -hmm. it's on my fingertips, I can feel it. Plugs at night. So. Come up to it. Wait, I waited for the waves. I get on my rock. And now I want to get on the foremost part of the rock. I Meaning you guys are the water. I want to get up here. So my feet are dangling over the edge. That's how I like to do it. Because if I get hit by a wave, I have that extra cushion. Right? If I'm here on a rock, I'm going to get knocked off almost every time. So when a wave comes in, I just want to squish down, kind of lean forward, kind of mm, hit the wave when it's coming in. Like it's going to hit you. Now you're going to hit the shit more than the wave. So getting off the rock is the biggest thing. When you get off the rock, you never want to do this. Right? Because you have no support right here. When you get on or off the rock, you're always, always, 100% of the time, unless it's a big rock and slide down on your butt, you're going to back off. You put the rod here and back down. I know this for a fact because I've broken my ribs really bad. Almost got killed. So um, always back off the rock. And that's if you do those things, you know, and I, I showed you how to land the fish on the rocks. You're landing, if you're landing a fish on the beach, different thing. A lot of you guys are south shore if you're sand beaches. You know, I see a lot of guys when they're landing, when they're landing a fish, say this is the lip right here. So let's just stand at the lip, horse it, and horse down to the beach. No good, especially a big fish. You want to back up, back up, back up. You want to be like, I don't know, 12 to 13 feet from the lip. When you're, when you're landing the fish. And then when he's in the lip, especially a bigger fish, you want to wait until the wave brings him over that lip onto the beach. And when he's onto the beach, and this is good for the fish, you don't want to do this. Now, 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 you're, now your reel is all messed up. It's got sand in it, everything. The fish is flopping around on the beach, you know, getting all the slime off of it. Instead, you want to keep a lot of line out, like at least 10 feet. Walk up to the fish, like this, like almost like you would on a rock. Grab the leader, and then take the fish off. So the fish, once he's like this, he, now picture the fish. His head's here, his body's here, he's not flopping around anymore. You're completely preventing flopping around. You're controlling your rod, your reel doesn't get messed up, and you're Get it, and then you release them. And then when you release them, don't release the fish when a wave's coming in, because it'll just get washed back on the beach, right? Wait till the wave comes in, and then when it's back washing, you can release the fish, or preferably, if you can, you know, get in the water and just release them that way. 
Schoolies, I can tell you, you know, I mean, you can buck tail schoolies, it's just ice flipping back, you know, as fast as I can. I get them back in the water. Bigger fish got to take care of them, because they're more stressed out. Bigger fight, you know? Do I have any questions on that? Bill, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. There is any too much detail in there. This is the original lamb glass GSB 1321F, which is an 11-foot rod. So, like on the sand beaches, I use uh, primarily the 11-foot rod. In the back bays, I go 9 or a 10 light, you know, a 10 lighter rod. It depends on what you're fishing. Basically, I fish with three rods. I use a 9-foot lamb glass. I got a 10-foot century, which is light. I use it for, like, Kind of back bay each, kind of heavier back bays. The nine foot I use really light stuff, and I use this for everything else. And the century you already started. But you know, my guys will say, "Oh, yay!" And, you know, I hate the bright nights. Um, my recommendation, and I've seen this written in in uh, in, um, in uh, magazines and stuff. You know, you got to go deep on bright nights. Yeah, you should fish deeper inlets, deeper water on bright nights. But I find that that's not true. I find on bright nights, if you go quicker retrieves and shallower water, because where's the bait going? In the shallow water, in the shallows, on the reefs. You know, I suppose maybe there's a cove over here that's 15 foot, there's a reef right here, and the reef's like three, four, or five foot. I want to fish that reef on a bright night usually. And it's just a little tip, you know, thinking about, you know, Adjust your retrieves to the brightness of the night. I do all the time. Some people just use that one retrieve all the freaking time. You know, my my good buddy is in the sun. I'm not gonna mention his name because he's probably me. But he's like, he's next to my booth, by the way. You can ask him. So, come to my booth. <laughs> and he uses that same goddamn retrieve all the time. And and, and you know, I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, how do you get those fish? I just spent the retrieve. They usually use the me anyway. You know, sometimes I'll get them and I'll say, yeah, I'm just retrieving, I'm just retrieving faster. Or I might not even tell them. I was fishing with uh, our man, Tommy Corsi.